And at the end of the day, what it's really all about is freedom. The question really before the American people today is, with the government taking more and more money out of your pocket, with the government growing and making more and more decisions here in Washington, with the government making the decisions on how your health care is to be delivered, rather than you and your, your doctor making the decision, with the government taking over the energy sector, the health care sector, 25% of our economy, with the government saying to future generations, we're going to have to take more money out of your pocket in order to pay the bills, in order to borrow the money, you have less freedom. This just shows you how the president and the majority here in Congress are proposing a dramatic and radical new increase in the size of government way beyond where we have historically been. I asked the Congressional Budget Office, before this budget came due, what will the tax rates on my three children have to be if we're going to have to finance all this growth of government through taxes, which ultimately must happen? If the government's to spend beyond its means by borrowing, somebody's going to have to pay that back through higher taxes. And that's the next generation. And the answers I got from the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office keep me awake at night. As I mentioned, I'm in my late 30s. My kids are four, five, and seven years old. And what they said was really scary. They said that by the time my three kids are my age, in order to pay these bills that they're racking up for them, the lowest tax bracket in America today, the 10% bracket, would have to go up to 25%. The middle income tax bracket for middle income taxpayers would have to go to 66% income tax rate. In the top tax bracket, the one that the small businesses pay would go to 88%. That's the ending of America. That's the end of prosperity. That is severing the, the legacy of this country. And the legacy of this country is that each generation takes its challenges seriously, fixes those problems so that they can bequeath onto the next generation a more prosperous and more secure America. We are at risk for severing that legacy for the first time in the history of this country. If we consign to the next generation that burden of debt, that increase in tax rates, there is no way we will be able to provide a higher standard of living to the next generation of Americans. But the matter is even more urgent than that. The matter is urgent to the fact that we are in the worst recession we've seen since the 1940s. It's a global recession. And the question we ought to be asking ourselves, should we be raising all these taxes in the middle of a recession? Should we be raising the energy fees on consumers by anywhere from $1,600 to $3,500 a year in a recession? Should we be raising taxes on small businesses which create most of our jobs in a recession? Should we be raising taxes on the assets that make up our pension plans, our children's 401k plans, their college education plans, our IRAs in a recession? Of course not. Unfortunately, that's precisely what the President and this budget does. This is a huge moment for America. It's a moment where America, and Americans may not know this because they're greasing this thing through so fast. It's a moment where America may, may abandon its tireless principles, its timeless ideas that built this country. The idea that the goal of government is to protect our rights and to equalize opportunity for all so people can stake their claim and make the most of their lives and replace that with more of a Europeanized notion, where we try to micromanage the results of people's lives, where people are less concerned about their liberty and more concerned about con security. We believe in having a safety net to help people who cannot help themselves. We believe in having a safety net to help people when they're down on their luck. But we reject the philosophy and the approach of this budget, which says we need to have more than that. We need to have a society where more and more Americans become dependent on the government itself for their own well-being. We want people to maximize their potential. We want people to make the most of their lives. We don't want to lull people in lives of complacency where they're becoming more and more dependent upon the federal government. We have seen what those ideas do. We see them on display in foreign capitals all around the world. Higher unemployment, lower standard of living, stagnant wages, decaying societies. That's not America. That is not what this country is. It's not the idea of America. We want the idea of America that we've known for the 21st, 20th century to be the idea of America in the 21st century. 
That's what this budget is about. That's what this blueprint or this architecture we're debating here today is really all about. With that, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to reserve the balance of my time.